So we're looking at difference quotients. Um, we looked at one example here in the previous video. Um, and we saw that evaluating these difference quotients for, for certain values of h, it, it gets a little bit messy, right? Because, um, I mean, of course, with a calculator, you can clean this up a little bit. But still, uh, f of 1, simple enough to compute. Uh, but then you've got to take your, your different values of h, and of course you want to look at values of h that are close to 0, so you probably want to look at plus or minus 0 0.1, plus or minus 0 0.01, so on. Uh, once you've chosen your h, add 1 to it, get your 1 plus h, take that 1 plus h, plug it into your function, see what you get, right? And, and then once you've worked that out, well, subtract f of 1, subtract that 3, divide by the original h, you've got your difference quotient. Uh, so it's a lot of work, right? And it's mostly a lot of work because we haven't yet developed the tools to kind of, you know, deal with limits like this, right? That's coming. It's coming very soon. Uh, so let's think about it. How do we, how can we make our life a little bit easier? Well, rather than, rather than putting in particular values for h, let's just ask ourselves, um, in general, for, for, for an arbitrary value of h, what is f of 1 plus h? Well, f of 1 plus h is minus 2 times. Now, remember, be very careful. A lot of people, this is one of the places where people struggle um, in calculus, is just basic function notation. That 1 plus h is there as an argument for the function f. So this is instructing you to take each occurrence of x in the original definition of your function and replace it by the input 1 plus h. So that x squared becomes a 1 plus h squared, right? And then we have 5 times, again, x is replaced by 1 plus h, right? Um, where, where students, if, if students struggle on difference quotients, when they get wrong answers, when they go wrong on these, it tends to be because they've made a mistake right here in this very initial step. They haven't correctly plugged the 1 plus h into the function, right? Um, next most likely culprit is an algebra error, um, but this sort of basic knowing how functions work trips up people more often than you might think. Okay, so we expand that square. 1 plus 2h plus h squared, okay, 5 times 1 plus h, and now let's clear the brackets, minus 2, minus 4h, minus 2h squared, take care that that minus 2 applies to all three terms, plus 5, plus 5h, okay. So, 5 minus 2 gets you 3. Um, notice that, that those, you know, the terms without an h, well, we kind of know what happens if, you know, that's like setting h equal to 0, that's just f of 1, right? Um, and then 5h minus 4h, so plus h, and then we have this minus 2h squared, okay? So that means that if I wanted to do f of 1 plus h minus f of 1, well, that's going to be 3 plus h minus 2h squared minus f of 1, which is 3. And the 3s cancel, and you're left with h minus 2h squared. All right? Now, um, it's not a coincidence that those threes canceled, right? We knew, we knew from the outset that when h is 0, the numerator should be 0, right? f of 1 plus h subtract f of 1, right? If I put h equals 0, that's just f of 1 minus f of 1, right? So if I simplify the numerator, I should be left with something where all the terms depend on h. There's no constant term left over because you can see that if I put h equal to 0, I get 0, as I should, okay? Um, now, we can go one step further, since everything in here includes a multiple of h, we can take out a common factor, right? We can write this as h times 1 minus 2h, okay? So why do we want to do that? Well, 
remember that we're, we're computing this difference quotient, right? And, and remember that we're doing this when h is not equal to zero, okay? So since we're not considering zero as a value, right? We're, we're sticking to h not equal to zero. That means that to calculate this difference quotient as a function of h, well, I should take this difference in the numerator. I just have to divide by h, right? But dividing by h is just going to cancel that h that I have there. Leaves me with 1 minus 2h, OK? So now if I wanted to calculate this difference quotient for various values of h, I'm in a much better place, right? So now if somebody says, hey, I want, I want a table of values, right? I want h. I want d of h. I want to consider h at, you know, 0 0.5, 0 0.1, 0 0.01, and so on. Well, I can, I can plug those values in, right? So 2 times h, 2 times 0 0.5, that's 1, 1 minus 1. Oh, interestingly enough, I find that there the difference quotient is 0, okay? But I got to let h get closer and closer to 0. So what happens at point 0.1? Well, now it's 1 subtract, so that's going to be 1 subtract 0 0.2. So I get a 0 0.8. Then I get 1 subtract. Well, 0 0.02, so I get 0 0.98, and so on. And a reasonable person might conclude, and I mean, you can look at the function here and see, that as h gets closer and closer to 0, this difference quotient is going to get closer and closer to 1. 